We're here today to prove that it is possible to move people in great numbers to do something about the insurmountable problems we face in society. From overcrowded public schools, famine, environmental disasters, all the way to the unnecessary phenomena of war. We believe that no problem is insurmountable when proper organization and communication exist. Today we have the power to talk to anyone in the world through audio, video, and text. So why are we not putting these things to the test? The government has become completely unnecessary. I believe the United States should be made up of a Congress of 307,006,550 senators. Every voice heard and each vote counted. The chances to inform the public on these issues has been lost because of a media that believes that we are too ignorant to grasp these things. Things that we will never even get a chance to vote on anyway. Are the people too ignorant because of an educational system the politicians themselves have set up? The government believes these issues should be left to our representatives while they steal every dime from our pocket and every right from our existence. The various people have pointed out that the computer revolution is greater than that of the wheel and its ability to reshape human outlook and organization. While the wheel is an extension of the foot, the computer gives us a place where the hand of man has never set foot. With the increase of communication options and the advent of social networking, we have an unprecedented chance to reverse these ingrained structures and presuppositions. We have the chance to move people, truly move people to action. Our vision is of one world government in which every voice is heard and every vote is counted. But more importantly, that everyone on an individual basis does their part in small organized groups to make this world a better place. Corporate greed and dictatorial tyranny have no chance when speech is uncensored and organizational possibility is abundant. This, my friends, is what an unneutered internet provides. We need a name for our cell. It's not a cell, it's a network. We need a name for our network then. Any ideas? I took a poll online and the winner was The Global Village. How about just The Village? Samantha Kruger, profile interview one. So, how old are you? 24. Alright. Uh, where are you from? A small town in Iowa. You haven't heard of it. Alright. So, was it a rural area? Yeah, it was rural. Um, there were no Walmarts or big businesses. All the houses were spread apart. We grew up on a farm, but my parents weren't farmers. My dad looked houses for a living. So what did you grow on this farm? Um, we didn't grow anything on the farm. It was just in our family and where we lived. So did you kind of feel isolated there? Or? No, I didn't feel cut off from the world. We had internet, cable TV, satellite dishes pretty early on. In fact, I feel like I had a more media-saturated upbringing than other kids my age because there was nothing else to do other than watch hours of TV. You don't feel like you missed out on a modern American life? No, I don't feel like I missed out on anything. When I was 19, I moved to the city for college, and I don't feel like any of the kids had an advantage over me. In fact, moving to the city has been calming. It feels like the only natural environment. Well, why did you come to the city? Uh, I came here for the intellectual discourse. Uh, back in Iowa, I would visit message boards in order to get my fix. Were you a virgin when you came here? Yes, I was a virgin when I came to the city. It was something to get over with. I met a guy on Craigslist. He was older and attractive. He brought me back to his apartment and he had what he said was a real war hall on the wall. I guess I was impressed. Would you call it a positive experience? Yeah, it was a good experience. I felt like I was having sex with myself more than I ever had before. It was the best orgasm I ever had. You ever see this guy again? Uh, no. He didn't call or email afterwards, which was more than fine by me. Um, 
I didn't think about sex for another six months after that. All great leaders have led by example. Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, Jesus. Right. So in turn, we must lead by example. Are you saying you want to be Jesus? Jesus of the village. No, I'm saying if we're going to convince anyone of our ideas, then we need to demonstrate them through example. We met online my senior year of college. He was in his grad studies already. It wasn't my first time doing online dating, but I could tell it was hers. And yeah, as soon as I read her online profile, I knew we were right for each other. He seemed intelligent on his profile. Maybe a little too earnest, but a couple of things he said were kind of clever. So I thought it was worth a shot. I told him to make me a video explaining why he's worth dating and to email it to me. And I did. I sent her a video of me doing a backflip in my backyard. And then I asked her to send me a video explaining why she thought she was trustworthy. Somehow, she got my postal address online and mailed me a notarized copy of her credit rating. So we proceeded to chat online and via email. We were finishing each other's sentences. It was weird. It was like we were the same person. We started geeking out a bit, talking about how he got into new media stuff, coding and whatnot. It turns out that he had been on the same message board as me when I was 16. That would have made him 20. He didn't even have to say it. I was like, you're a Mediatron 87? I was not so quick to remember, but she jogged my memory. He already had quite an impact on my life, between directing me to different message boards, to reading materials, to suggesting different games and movies. I was suddenly a little freaked out. It was like finding out that Santa Claus is real and he wants to meet you and he wants to get into your pants. There was this paternal feeling that was not attractive. I was ready to meet, but she was a bit reluctant. Basically, I can only get her to commit to cyber dating. So one Friday, I sent her a flower icon on Facebook followed by an evite to join me in a chat room I had set up. When she logged on, I had a little fireplace gif rolling in the background. We both opened up a bottle of wine at our respective houses. She wanted to watch a movie, so we decided to both queue it up on our computers. And, uh, you know, we were drinking, started critiquing the movie bit by bit. By this point, we were both kind of drunk and maybe feeling a little amorous. I thought it'd be funny if we both set up avatars on Second Life and have sex. I had a profile in about 10 seconds. I already had a profile, but I didn't tell him that. It was wild. <laughs> she was into some things. But it was special. We had a good night. Anyways, I had agreed to meet him in person, and it was hard. I didn't really know what to talk about. It was like being at a bar, and you ask the bartender for a drink, and you turn around to find someone else sitting next to you. I already knew everything about him. There was no easy banter. I had a really long day and wasn't so talkative. We were like looking an email in the eye. Dinner was rough. So we go to get drinks at this place I knew and we got drunk, like really drunk. But it made things roll a lot easier. I told her about the project at the house, the collective, and basically we just talked about that the rest of the night. He was walking me home and it was the middle of February, and it was cold. And he took my hand, and it immediately started snowing. And I just kissed her. And she tasted like a memory I, I couldn't really place. So we woke up together the next morning, and it was like meeting for the first time for the third time. So we talked about this weirdness, and his feelings were that we had already gone through the first stages of the relationship before we ever met, and that it was natural the conversation would be a little bit slower now. My suggestion was that she just move in with me and we go for it. I mean, I just started the network at the house and she fit right in. And I've been here ever since. This was maybe a month and a half ago.
I still don't understand this idea of technology as extensions of man. Or, I understand it, but the way it's said seems too literal for such a figurative thing. Well, it is literal. And metaphorical. Technologies exist as an extension of man. For example? For example, television is an extension of the eye. The radio of the ear. Clothing is an extension of the skin. But again, these are just extensions of the human body metaphorically. They aren't literally attached to humans, and humans have lost nothing in the process of them being physically detached. Oh. That's up for debate, but they're attached to man literally in the sense that they're a part of the environment. The computer being the greatest example in the sense that it's an extension of the central nervous system. And this is due to the advent of the electrical circuit, which mimics the same reactions that happen in the body and the brain. What are some other examples? Um, all right, well the vibrator is an extension of the penis. The dishwasher is an extension of the hand. Should we feel sad that we aren't using a dishwasher? Not necessarily. Some things are done better with the human touch. It's all just a matter of being aware of your environment. Why are we standing with all those who are against Israel? They've tolerated more provocations than probably any other country in history. And despite having enough arsenal of nukes to obliterate their enemies, believe me, they can take care of themselves. How many have they lobbed? Answer, zero. While everyone complains about all the evils that Israel has done to the Arabs and then picks apart each tiny imperfection with their democracy, democracy, by the way, a republic is ugly. Tens of millions of Arabs, tens of millions, have suffered atrocities at the hands of their own countries. Gays are still tortured today and killed. Bloggers jailed without cause. Women humiliated, raped, and murdered. Dissidents killed. Protesters shot. Terrorists born. Suicide bombers given by their mothers. But Israel is the evil one? That's the obstacle to peace? Let me ask you this. How many homosexuals have been stoned to death by the Israelis? How many adulterers have been buried up to their neck in sand and stoned to death in Israel? How many bloggers have been jailed without cause? How many terrorists are wearing a yarmulke? Now, the world is being led to the water. That Israel is the evil one. And it's about to drink. Don't drink that water. Think anyone would care about the oil spill in the Gulf if it wasn't on TV? Would it be like a famine in Somalia or like just an abstraction? I think words are hallucinatory. A camera streaming 24-7 at the bottom of the ocean? That's concrete. Words are concrete. Sound and matter. Words change meaning. Images change meaning, especially with the factor of time. Images are untrustworthy. Let's play a game, word association. Close your eyes. Ready? Simple. Plan. Execution. Mouse. Trapped. Metal. Enhanced interrogation. Surveillance. Rocket science. Popsicle. Trustworthy replacement. Battery. Atomic comb. Shell. British petroleum. Infinite despair. Only later. Perhaps. Perhaps. Together. Never.
I love you. Felicia Donovan, interview four. What brought you to the collective? I came here through environmentalism. Were you involved in radical eco movements? Mm, no, I was a traditional environmentalist. I spent a lot of time hugging trees and throwing paint on fur, but I feel like I was getting nowhere. What I was doing was being outpaced by the corporations on such an exponential level. It's pointless. Okay, so what do you see as our mission? I guess it just feels really new and wide open, really. Feels like we can make whatever we want out of it. How about your personal goals? Well, I want to continue with what I was doing. I just want it to be more calculated. I don't want to chain myself to a tree. I want to chain a thousand people to a thousand trees. Do you think everybody shares that vision? I wouldn't say that we share the same passions. It's not really about that. Uh, I think there's more of an anti-authoritarian bent that unites everyone. We all want to see more bottom-up rather than top-down thinking. Bigger things to be more fragmented and smaller things to be more calculated. Okay, where are you from? I grew up in Ecuador. My parents were missionaries and I was there till I was 14. About a year before we left, a company came in and completely clear cut the forest we were living in. We had quite a bit of notice, so my parents had made plans to move to Connecticut. When the time came, we left. Was that a difficult adjustment for you? No, not really. I had to get used to being around mostly white people, but I had TV in Ecuador. I was familiar with the outside world. When I went to school, I could talk about mutual celebrity crushes with the other girls. American society was very familiar to me. So do you feel a strong connection to nature? I don't know. I guess I've never really had that strong of a connection to nature. I wouldn't really put it like that. I just felt like what we were doing was wrong. And it's still is. And how old are you? I'm 22 years, six months. 44 days, 22 hours, and five minutes old. Today we take the village from a community to the community. It's time we start demonstrating some of the things we've been talking about. The best way to accomplish this is to treat our group strategy as a new medium coming forward. If we treat our group as a new medium, as an extension of the public body, we will be far more sustainable than that of the fringe do-good groups. We are not a political party. We are a mechanism in ourselves. We are a signpost with the information that the everyday man now holds the power. The way a new technology becomes rooted in society is the same way a group of ideas becomes rooted in society. And for this, I have a four-point plan. One, enhancement. This is when a new technology enhances something that existed previously. I will use the example of radio throughout. With radio, it amplified news via voice, music, and sound. Two, obsolescence. This is when a new medium makes an old medium obsolete. Radio reduces the importance of the print and the visual. Three, retrieval. This is when a new medium retrieves that which has been made obsolete previously. Radio returns the delivery of information through the spoken word. Four, reversal. This is when a new medium flips into something completely different once it has been pushed to its extremes. Acoustic radio proceeds to flip into audiovisual TV once pushed to its limits. So, the way we begin is by engaging the public through their needs and setting an example at the same time. Today, more than ever, the public requires distraction and entertainment to keep their focus. So what I propose is on the first warm day of summer in Justice Park, we hold a flash mob, a water gun fight. But not just a water gun fight, a barbecue, a place to hang out, 
We get people out of their homes, outside, face to face with each other, engaging each other, and doing something together. When's everyone going to be here? You got those RSVPs, yeah. right? Yeah. On the, on the Facebook invite, there's like 30. 30? And I mentioned it in my last video blog, too. Two that was hours. a good idea to get those bubbles. We have uh, anyone see any, uh, any place to refill water? Mm. We should, like we should call someone in to bring a bucket. Maybe yeah. Matthew can bring some. <gasps> oh, yeah, that puts oh. into the bubble gun. Oh, maybe you bring a cell phone? Yeah, I have one in my bag. Our story is becoming complicated. A further complication arises from the fact that if there's muscle moving a limb one way, there's at least one other muscle moving it in the opposite direction. The bicep, which flexes the arm, is counteracted or antagonized by the tricep, which extends or strengthens it. Muscles on every occasion receive exactly opposite commands from the command center. When one is made to contract by proprioceptive reflex, its antagonist is made to relax simultaneously. All movements are smooth and are carried out within the safety limits of the load-bearing capacity of muscles and tendons. Okay, so as webmaster for the village, I've decided to start a little video blog chronicling how things are going. We've been seeing so much response on the website and tons of interaction. Um, there have been two groups, one in Dearborn, Michigan, and one in Portland, Oregon, who have taken on some of our ideas for community projects. So, shout out to them. Uh, secondly, things in our particular house are progressing. We're still battling around ideas for the next big thing, but this time we want to do something that impacts the community. We want to start something that keeps going once we're finished. Another thing that's important to us though, as far as spreading these ideas, is what is happening in the groups face to face. How are your personal relationships going? As far as our house, things are going well. Anthony and Samantha have been dating for a while, so they have a 
beautiful relationship, actually. Uh, Jerome is a brilliant sort of recluse who has only finally begun to come out of his shell. Between our online lives, schedules, and day-to-day -day maintenance of our survival, we probably don't spend enough time together as a group, but that is something I plan on changing and encourage all of you to do as well. I'll leave you with this nugget of wisdom. An electric society has the same tendency as the agrarian one, since it swiftly translates hardware into software or information. This information approaches the condition of speech and more and more becomes capable of being learned by a child. Spread those seeds, guys. I'll see you next week. Well, this just isn't going to work, Sam. We support you entirely when it comes to your education, but your mother and I are not going to keep sending the checks if you aren't in school. I am getting an education. It's just more like an internship. Besides, it's just a break. I already looked online and all the courses I need they're offering in the winter term. I don't even know what more like an internship means. Do you get credit for this, like an internship? It's just like a satellite course. We're implementing things that we were learning about in school instead of reading about them in books. I think it's really good for me and the world at large too. I mean, it's so much bigger than we thought. We're helping people. And besides, it's better if I go back to school a little bit later anyways with the way that the economy is. You know that you need structure and school is the only thing I'm willing to trust with you this far from home. I'm fine. I've had structure for a long time. Two years is not a long time, Sam. It is today. We love you and we'll support everything right for you always. But you will be in the spring semester or you'll come back to Iowa or there will be no money. I mean, this cryptic runaround talk sounds like you've joined a fucking cult. You're okay, right? Do I need to come there? You can come if you want to, but I'm better than I've ever been. So then what are you doing? You'll see. Hi, ich bin's Michel und ich bin Sven und wir zeigen euch heute unseren ultimativen Trick. Hey, what are you doing, man? Just uploading some stuff to the website. Oh, cool. Uh, listen to this. Readiness for war characterizes contemporary social systems more broadly than their economic and political structure, which it subsumes. Mm hmm Well, what do you think, man? What do you mean, what do I think? I mean, what do you think it means? I think it means, uh, war is the foundation of society. See, I think it means war is the catalyst for change. Uh, change happens after the war. Well, just to, like, sort things out or something? I don't know, man. Um, I'm kind of busy. Just, can you just email me? Dream baby dream Dream baby
But El Matador is unmoved. The ferocious beast bears down on our hero with the force of a thousand armies. <laughs> El Matador is courageous, but visibly shaken by the brute force of the beast. Sweat glistens on her brow, but her gaze is steady. This is not the end for El Matador, only the beginning of universal glory. Guys, right, seriously, I'm trying to work. <laughs> I'm trying to hear myself think as I'm clowning around. Take a break and pretend! Hey, man, hey. <laughs> Revolution takes a break? Hmm? Osama bin Laden. Uh, I guess I thought he was a maniac. Yeah, but wasn't he kind of a genius maniac? What? I mean, from like an organizational standpoint. Actually, from what I understand, he was quite inept. I don't think Al Qaeda had more than a couple hundred members in its long life before 9 11. He just got lucky. No, I don't think so. I think he saw where he was failing, and then he just took it viral. You're an idiot. Is fundamentalist Islam not a viral idea? The most insidious kind. He realized he didn't even need a huge organization. 
this one that was big enough to spread a viral idea to create other organizations. And then 9-11 sprouted so many videos that it must have been the most successful viral video of pretty much all time. Yeah, I guess. And then it was all over, he just kind of disappears, starts video blogging for the rest of his life. This is a guy that really got it. A butterfly flaps its wings in the east, and the Twin Towers fall in the west. And bombs fall in the east. Exactly. What exactly are you implying? Nothing, I'm just kind of thinking out loud. Are you saying you actually admire this nutcase? I'm saying that he was really good at organization and using media to be an absentee revolutionary. This is what I'm talking about. This program is going to change the world. Hmm. I mean, they give these kids in isolated areas a, a chance to enter into the rest of the world. You know, through software, they can learn to read and write, finally see what it's like on the other side of the class curtain, pull themselves into alignment with the rest of the world. Uh, yeah. What's with these monosyllabic responses? You don't, you don't agree, huh? I mean, it's like a no-brainer to me. It's like a cure for AIDS or something. I don't think anyone in their right mind would think it's a bad idea. Well, I don't think it's a bad idea. I just, uh, I'm a little bit more skeptical than you about it. I mean, what happens when Google takes away their camera crews? These people even know how to use the technologies that they've been given? Or what if they break down? I mean, do they know how to fix them? And what if, where is this? What about uh, the government coming in and cracking down on communication between people and taking away new forms of technology? And where are they then? Yeah, I, I mean, it's the first step, man. And hopefully some of them will educate themselves and grow up to change their society. Change their society? Yeah. I don't think there's enough time for that. I mean, for example, how's one of those laptops going to be able to make their barren soil capable of growing crops? Maybe not directly, but I mean, these laptops, you can gather scientific knowledge and, you know, educate yourselves on how to reverse that process and curb further erosion. What they need are guns. Serious? You're serious, guns. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about technology, right? And what's the technological progression of the gun? Uh, the camera. Uh, one projects out and the other projects in. These multimedia presentations shot on video for an audience in the first world might have some sort of revolutionary impact for the industrialized world, but in the third world, this kind of thing isn't really practical for any um, measurable change. That's all I'm saying. What are you saying? I'm just saying that they're not going to be able to do it by themselves. I mean, raising awareness is one thing, but it's not going to matter if it's just awareness that's raised every once in a while on the nightly news or on some hour-long television special. You know, like, oh, it still sucks in Africa, but in other news, Jerry Seinfeld's back, and let's see what he's up to after the break. <laughs> okay, Jerome, I just don't think I'm as cynical as you. I just don't think there's enough time. I don't know what the fuck you mess with is. AK-47, 30 round shot move. 30 round shot move. You ready to put your stay up your bitch ass. Oh shit, where are you going? You ain't, you ain't even speaking game. You ain't know what the fuck you doing. And shut your motherfucking ass up. Oh my god. Oh, oh.
When you were a kid, did you think that by now we would have like flying cars and we'd be traveling to outer space? I guess so, but I grew up in the rainforest. I was mostly just preoccupied with nature and making up games. You weren't into science fiction? I was into science fiction a lot. Like I said, I just liked hanging out with the other kids and doing the usual outdoorsy stuff. I always wanted to go to Venus because you know that book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus? My mom always had a copy of the book and I always took that literally and I always thought that Venus is where I should go. I always wanted to go to Paris. I saw the movie one time about this guy and this girl and he was on the run and she didn't really know if she loved him or not. But they are mostly just talking. It was kind of boring, but it was just nice to see two people communicating. And Paris was so beautiful. Yeah, the city of romance. Have you ever been in love? No. I want to. I think it's a biological imperative. It might be nice. No, look at the monkey. Did I get, did it capture? Why did it, it didn't say, I put it on capture. That's a pretty good monkey. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a minute. Hmm. I don't think you, I don't think oh, you here, can. Here, now, do it again. What does it say here? Take a photo snapshot, okay. Uh, All right, I'm good. Well, I've, uh, Decided where our next flash mob is going to be. Uh, and I wanted to get the three of you here before I tell everyone else. It's a little modest, but I think it's going to be the most important one yet. I think people are really going to take notice of this and really want to get on board with our cause. So what is it already? Well, I've decided the first day of spring, we gather everyone we can through social media and we take back that plot of land in the subway by flushing and we build a community garden in one day. You know, I mean, all of us. You know, we'll get volunteers from the neighborhood. They'll be able to eat from it. We'll get people face to face, we'll have fun. I think this will really help get people going and get us noticed, you know? Cooperation from the neighborhood really integrating ourselves, making a difference, and at the end of the day, we want something to show for ourselves. Not just some theory, but like something substantial. We can focus our energy on locally sustainable food. Do you think that anyone's gonna actually eat the food? Sure. I mean, they'll have to wash it just like they bought it at a grocery store. But, yeah. Uh, I thought you guys would be more excited about this. Kind of a good idea. Well, it's not that I'm not excited, but I'm just thinking about logistics. Logistics, like, I mean, basically just buy supplies, organize, and we're off. How are we going to get these supplies? I said I'll, I'll go buy them. I mean, you guys don't you know. I'll find out where to get the soil and all that. Who will buy them? Well, you know, we'll, we'll all pitch in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have something to tell you guys. What is it? Well, my dad cut me off, so there's no more money. I'm not going to be able to pay for this apartment soon, pretty soon. I'm probably not going to be able to feed myself, so, yeah. There's no more money. It's okay, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, the three of us still have our financial aid coming in, right? Right? So, we'll just get part-time jobs or something and make up the difference. It's not a big deal. Sam, you're like family. We'll take care of it. Yeah, we'll take care of this. I've been working on getting us a grant, and, you know, uh, we're just gonna have to figure this out. I kinda 
need my health insurance. Well, it's not like you're gonna get sick anytime soon, right? We'll come back to the health insurance thing. Besides, you're going back to school in the fall. Your dad will come back around. Guys, we just have to make it to the summer. All right, well, um, I think it's a good idea and we should do it. Awesome. That's one. All right. So, should we start before people get here, or...? Yeah, I mean, I personally talk to each and every person that I invited, so I have no doubt they'll be here. Let's just get started and show them that we're, uh, you know, got the ball rolling already, so they don't have to do too much work. Okay. Play the basis. So Sam and Jerome, while you, got, you guys dig the holes, uh, Felicia, you just manicure the beds, get ready to plant the seeds. The first... Go this way? Yeah, the we're first breaking ground. Breaking ground. Okay. A garden grows Under in Grandpa. Brooklyn. A garden grows in Brooklyn. All right, cut it up. Oh man, it's gonna Let's be so cool right if now. we like we'll get, grow we'll our own squash. Later. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, I know, it's gonna, like, I love taste, that. It's gonna taste really good. Yeah. Tomatoes, zucchini, Brussels sprouts. I see one of those seeds. Do you think we should do like more flowers over by the wall? So it kind of like makes the area a little bit Prettier. Um, yeah, like you're like pretty. you're getting home from yeah. work. You get up the subway and you can see like a burst of of, of colors. I like that idea. Uh, you want to kind of like loosely just kind of pack the soil. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. What's that? Ooh. Is that a? What is that? Oh, it smells bad out here. Thought that people would be here by now. A lot of people like are excited about this. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah, let me, Sam, just let me do this. I got it. Come on. You just help police plant the beds, all right? Yeah. I grew up on a farm. Yeah. You, you do yeah. smaller holes yeah, that are deeper. deeper. You worked on a farm. You like, worked at a Denny's or some shit. Dude, I still lived on a farm, like, right, my whole well, life. This okay. isn't a farm, hey guys, let's right? not fight, let's just do it's it. A subway. Guys, let's just fucking focus, all right? Jerome, you help the ladies plant the seeds, and I'll just dig the How much is the fucking do? seeds? They, we can't all be planting the seeds in the same hole, man. I'm <laughs> marking rocks. <laughs> Maybe make like a row here, you know? Um, you know what? Let's just make a row. Yeah. Plant all this. Yeah. Um, so I started on the second row over here. Um, I don't know how far down we're going. Can you just focus on these three first, Jerome? We'll finish these and then yeah, we'll get to that. I mean, these yeah. are finished. I'm just kind of planning out where it's going to be. I've yeah. already planned it out. Okay. All right. Um, have you marked them with X's? I mean, you people know? could still so come, maybe. All right. Just, just We'll give it like another half an hour. Keep on yeah. planning. Yeah, I mean, I think it's deep enough already. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to make it a little wider so you can plant more seeds. I mean, not all of them are going to survive, you know? Yeah, but you, I mean, you don't want them all like fighting for the same reason. Jerome, why don't you just start on your hole, okay? You're pointing out two feet apart, but not taking into consideration the actual circle. Hey, diameter. you guys! What does pie Come have on. to do with the. We're supposed to be having feet. fun. Jerome, just measure it better. I'm sorry, did, did, it, did you bring a yardstick for me? Are you trying to yeah, dig well. a grave? Why is it so. <laughs> <laughs> didn't mm -hmm. you say you talked to everyone present. that was coming? So yeah, even I mean, if the Facebook messaged, was wrong, like a text message. If, if you if you just text message people, that's not gonna make them come out. Like you have the, people like to get like personal a text invite. message doesn't qualify as communication unless you hear back from them. It is because you text someone doesn't mean that they're coming. Yeah, you know they're like thanks. <laughs> thanks. That's it. Thanks. Thanks. Um, the seeds like this. Are we marking this? My patience is like this big. Where are all the people that you invited? I don't know. Check the Facebook invite. You get the right date, Felicia? You're supposed to double check all my stuff. I'm supposed to double check everything. Yeah. Did you wipe your ass today? You want me to double check that? 
Oh, I, I talked to all of them, and they're all coming. All of my friends are coming. Shut up. It's because they're, 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 they're here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, we're actually doing my Thank ideas. You, what, what ideas have you had? Oh, I didn't know that any of us were allowed to have ideas that weren't your ideas. <laughs> Whatever. I say we just save our supplies and do it next week. We'll put another Facebook invite with well, the right date. We're, we're already here, though. No, we're already here. We that's have. gonna like we're totally. Here, so so what? We'll just come back. Like a whole row. Do you want to buy can next? Do, we can do two more instead of. It's five gonna. More. It's, it's gonna, gonna give us like a really flaky reputation. Yeah. Like oh, right. oh it's we're yeah, moving we, it again next week. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. I'm just a little pissed off. We have to move forward, presuming that nobody else is gonna come. Go near the green. <laughs> so hopefully, guys, I haven't lost my touch with actual food. I've just been cooking ramen noodles for the last six months. Everything smells really good. I'm just really happy that we're all just sitting down and sharing a meal for once. It feels like we're always just focused on work and never get any face time with each other. I should probably apologize. I know I kind of get wrapped up in what we're doing here, but I just really want this thing to succeed, you know? We just need to do more. I mean, don't lose this momentum. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Jerome has actually had some amazing ideas lately. Yeah, like what? Redecorating? <laughs> hey, you guys, cut out the business talk tonight and enjoy a good meal in each other's company. On that note, da 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 da. Mm. Oh, what wow. do we have? A little surprise. I actually picked up a bottle of wine. It's the most expensive that I've ever <laughs> bought. I'm going to try some of those. Here, here you go. We don't have a lot of in the way of utensils. Uh, what's up your plate? Oh yeah, thank you. Where are you sitting, Sam? Oh, I'm next to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's room here too, Sam. Whatever. Whatever. Hey, don't yeah, they're, forget your plate. They're just, I just seasoned them a little different. Oh, thanks. We're using these. Did you get enough, Anthony? Um, I can do a little more. Oh, uh, 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 uh. oh, wow. More, more, more. Did you get some of this one? Oh, no, I didn't. So, uh -oh. I propose a toast. Right on. Cool. You're here. To our first meal in our community garden. May it bring sustenance not just to us, but for future generations. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, you know how to pick them. I, I asked the man, um, what he could give me for the amount of dollars that I had. <laughs> That's what he gave me. So. Well, there you go. You know, guys, I have to say, um, well, I didn't think that we were going to make it through everything. Um, so thank you. I know I wasn't always the easiest person to deal with. Uh, so really, I mean, thanks for putting up with all my shit. I mean, but this, that's what it's about, right? Community. Mm, yeah. Putting up the shit. Especially you, Jerome. Indeed. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, but seriously, I guess I've just been more hopeful recently. 
I mean, I think it's definitely easier to be hopeful. I feel like everything's better whenever it gets a little warmer. I agree. And I think this is going to be the best summer any of us have ever had. Mm, I totally agree, which is why. I didn't tell you guys this, but I think I'm going to... I think I'm actually going to put off going to school until the fall. Huh? Just because I think we do have such a good thing happening this summer. And I just, with all this momentum and I, I don't want to lose steam, right? When we're at the edge of something, you know? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, Sam, I definitely think that you'd be more effective to the group if you had a degree. I think it would kind of up the ante a little bit. It's just a couple. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm going back to school in the fall. Oh, okay. I've already started my dissertation. Oh, um, I was just going to, like, help flesh out a couple little minor points. I mean, we've done all the work that I needed to see here. Yeah. So, thanks, guys. You know, I'm really excited about the future, too. I feel like I've been focusing on the cause a lot more, and um, I'm just really excited for the future. I feel like... I think we're going to be a national presence in the next year. Mm -hmm. Sam, this is really good, by the way. It's really good. Yeah, I think we totally could be a national presence. Mm. How cool would that be? Well, I say to Anthony, uh, our fearless leader, come on, for a great idea. Mm. It's Anthony. Thanks, guys. Couldn't do it without you. You guys have been thinking about our next plan, and I think that one of you, someone not me, should have the next plan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the great Anthony is letting up the reins a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to get things started, but I never want to be dictating anything for forever. So you do admit that you have been a bit of a dictator. Okay, a little bit. <laughs> well, why did you guys have an idea? I, for one, would like to do something a little bit more controversial this time. Mm -hmm. Controversial, huh? Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. Let's do something controversial to get some more attention in the press, but we don't want to alienate anyone. Yeah, I mean, nothing too controversial. I've been thinking about us recently, and I guess the work that we could be doing on ourselves. Like sit-ups? <laughs> <laughs> No, really, no. What, do you, what do you mean? No, I mean, like, we're always talking about uh, the media and our environments and amputations that occur to our senses. But what happens after those amputations? Uh, what, what's left of our senses? They're still there, dude. Well, yeah, but are they dulled? No, they're enhanced. Well, I want to do an exercise. An exercise that kind of scrambles up our senses and extensions of our senses. What's that supposed to be? It doesn't have to prove anything, just for like fun experience, kind of mm -hmm. play around with these ideas that we have. Yeah. Where do we start? Alright, well, um, let's start with an environmental sense, language. An exercise that kind of scrambles up languages, mix them together, combine languages, and words, and phrases, and stuff like that, and just play around with it. Alright, well, it's your idea. You start. Simply exposition. How far flung is your fuck floor? And how felt tingling your voluptuary? Boulder Dash, you friend of a long cold cat, you who has a time of clock. <laughs> Policemen who police the police.
Ladies and big. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Let's let's try to um, let's let's amputate another sense. Um, how about uh, sight? Um, Felicia, could you get um, get four blindfolds? Or some, you know, something yeah, something yeah. put over our eyes. Uh, Scarves or something. Yeah. All right, everybody, put these on. <clears throat> We're gonna continue the language exercise, but now with that sense of sight. All right, I'll go first. How on the outer side of his bell try your tires and close your nose and paradigm may may re rise in every. Making his pilgrimage of child so engrossing to his gamamine. What the ideoglossary he found under Hicks I saw. All uh, differing from clocks from keys since no one has the time of beard. Whose wraths hire for the wreaths of highly fictional charity. Oh, that's great. Okay, so what senses have we amputated in order to extend? Okay. Well, we'll get to that last, but what else? Touch. Right. And how have we amputated touch? Through clothing. Exactly. So I think we should all get naked. No, we shouldn't do that. What's it supposed to accomplish, Jerome? Well, it's just an exercise. It's an exercise of awareness. I mean, we're all wearing blindfolds anyway, so nobody can see each other. And sight is a sense that we rely on too much, so... Why not experience the world a little bit more purely by stripping away our layers of clothes? I'll do it. Well, I won't. I'll do it too. Here, I'll go first. Alright, so I'm naked, but I'm not self-conscious, because nobody can see me, and I'm amongst people that I trust, and we're all just experiencing the air a little bit differently. Alright, so let's try the nonsense exercise again. I'll start again. It was the bloodest thick that ever got her drop smothered in the flap of the fan. Gave your moth for a first beginning, big to bog, back to bog. Play Strasbourg. Wait, are you naked? <laughs> I'm not naked. Come on, it's just an exercise. Here, I'll go. All right, all right. Stop if you're absent-minded in the alphabet. Very happy. Much better. Now go. I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> you're not supposed to think about it. In the days of older days, being thou travel is remote. Awesome. All right, so we have one last amputation to do for tonight. Hearing. Everybody just plug up your ears, and we're going to just all talk nonsense at one time together and just be really loud, and we're going to wipe language clear of me. OK, everybody go. My Older days than these. The play is Strasbourg. Whose wrath's higher? Felicia. Felicia. 
Hey, Felicia. Where did everyone go? I think they went to Jerome's room. Of course. Can you just close your eyes? Sure, I'm sorry. See, I'm not the only one who's sick. You are correct. I'm assuming we did not simultaneously catch the flu. Seems reasonable. I'm looking for the carton of cream we used for the sauce last night. It feels like food poisoning. It must have been expired. I made some ginger tea. Everyone drink and you'll be okay in like an hour. I'll try some. I don't think it'll work. Just drink it. Did anyone take a trash out last night? I can't remember. I don't know. Look, I already made an appointment with the doctor this afternoon. I'll go and how are you going to pay for it? The coffer's a little empty these days. You don't have to pay for it immediately. They bill you later. I think I'm the bright side. We all have the same thing, so it would be like getting a four for one meal. Found it. This doesn't expire till next week, so it can't be the cream. I don't know. It could still be the cream. Maybe we just left it out for too long or something. Uh, sure. One Anthony! Yeah? There's a police officer here to see you. Cool. Hello? Anthony Pelzar? Yes? I understand that you were behind the plant of garden on the corner of Roman and Flushing. Yes? Were you aware that the property does not belong to you? Uh, I was aware that it belonged to the city, and we were just trying to make it look a little better. Better or not, it's against the law. Were you also aware that it's against the law to plant food in New York City? Uh, I wasn't aware of that. It's a health hazard. The soil in the city isn't suitable for growing food. It'll make you sick. <sighs> I was not aware of that. I'm going to have to issue you a number of citations for violating health code and procedure. <sighs> I mean... Do you really have to do that? We were just, I, I was not aware of these codes, I promise. You know, we were just trying to make the neighborhood look a little better. Ignorance is not admissible. You have 30 days to appear in court to pay the fine by mail. Do you want to stand? Yeah, I understand. Have a nice day. Yeah, goodbye. Today, America is fighting two wars, one in Afghanistan and one in Iraq. And they're being broadcast back to us in only one of two ways. These two methods date back to the beginning of the moving image. One way is to simply film something and disseminate the footage as is. The other method is to take footage of many different things and edit them together in a way that tells a specific story. This second method is the way we receive reportage from the wars today. There are bans on reporters in certain areas of these countries, and there are bans on filming caskets returning from the wars. On top of this, there are self-imposed bans by the major media outlets for various reasons. For example, not wanting to offend a certain person in power, or to offend the American people's sensibilities of decency when it comes to graphic imagery, or simply because they feel the American people have had enough of a specific story at a given time. 
This is one reason you do not see the sort of outrage towards these wars that you did during Vietnam. With the Vietnam War, the television and print medias were diligent about showing the dark side of the war to the public. And at dinner time, American families would see soldiers languishing in the jungle or another round of coffins coming home. This resulted in mass outrage throughout the country and helped to spawn innumerable protests and fringe groups, including the Students for a Democratic Society and the Weather Underground. None of this officially ended the war, but it kept politicians in a state of worry and kept pressure on the idea that this must end eventually. Today, those in power have such a tight rein on the distribution of these images in the mainstream that they essentially hold a blank check until it starts to affect those back in the homeland. Now alongside this story, the first method of broadcast is peeking its head out due to the availability of small, low-quality cameras and cell phone cameras. A prime example of this is the Abu Ghraib photos taken by our own soldiers. These tools are also available so cheaply that the people in these damaged regions have access to them and more and more raw, uncut footage trickles out of war zones and despotic regions. As people become more untrusting of the mainstream media, and these technologies spread exponentially, these images that tell an undoctored story will become more prevalent, possibly becoming our main source of news from around the world. As far as helping the world through technology, it is our duty to do everything we can to get these devices into the hands of every dispossessed and underprivileged person in the world. Poor image quality of these devices, compounded with the amateur methods in which they're utilized, deliver an abstraction that compels the viewer to use their own imagination to complete the picture. This makes a disturbing image all the more disturbing because the mind fills in the blanks and the event is internalized rather than just witnessed. Traditional reporting will not die, and there will always be people chiming in on every story for better or for worse. But the difference is the separation of the image and story will allow people to make up their own minds. This sort of fragmented imagery will have a myriad of effects on our lives, the most fundamental being its likelihood to change the way we dream. Video blog number 17. Things are at a bit of a standstill at the moment. We've all been really sick for about a week and an unexpected expense has come up, so we're currently regrouping. It'll at least give us a chance to create something and make something out of nothing. So we're keeping positive and concentrated on moving forward. Um, setbacks are always going to occur, which is why all of you are so important. I'd like to point out a group actually in Austin, Texas, who orchestrated their first successful flash mob this weekend. There were 35 people in attendance, which is fantastic. Keep up the good work. That being said, we'd also like to address some of you who have been up to some things that we don't exactly approve of. You know who you are. We must respect other people's rights, whether it be their personal information, hard drives. We have to set an example for the world, not be an example for our detractors. Good night. And good luck. I don't feel like Anthony should be leading the group anymore. I think that's a little harsh. He made one mistake. We shouldn't crucify him for it. It's a mistake we're all still paying for. When's this nauseous feeling going to go away? My head feels cloudy. I can barely think. We all should have done our research better. It's not just that. I just don't feel like he's someone we can look up to anymore. Well, he, he said he wants to give up more control. Give us more of a chance to direct. So you should do it. There's no need to be formally ousting anyone. Yeah, you're right. That's what we gotta do, I guess. I'm sorry. I just, I can't think. I can't get anything done. I should have gone back to school. My medication ran out, and I just, I don't know what we're gonna do anymore. I, for one, am gonna get a job. I'm not gonna let what we've built slow down. If you need help, I'm always here. It's just not true. What's not true? I just, I don't feel any closer to you guys than the guys at the pizza shop. Maybe it's just a new way of relating that you're not used to. I just, I feel like my head is in Calcutta, spleen is in Puerto Rico, my liver's in Costa Rica. None of it's connecting, it's all just spreading. Your stomach's in the toilet, so at least that's close. Maybe you just need to reel it in a little bit now mentally. 
focus on the task that's at hand. We need food to survive or we'll starve. That's a good place to start. Yeah. Jerome said that this is just a moment of conflict, that we're just coming to terms with what we've created as a group. And he says that all progress is preceded by conflict. He says that all the world's wars are just men coming to terms with the new concept of men in relation to men, in relation to men. Well, I think Jerome's view of the world is a little harsh. And to use your example, a little too focused on men, but yeah. In theory, that sounds about right. Do you think that we'll all get through this or just get eaten alive by all of them? about the natural world have been inspired by all the real or imaginary military necessities of their epoch. Examples of innovations inspired by war abound, from the transistor radio, the assembly line, the atomic particle, all the way down to the common lawnmower, which many do not realize was a weapon devised by Leonardo da Vinci. The relationship between war and innovation is explicit. War is the principal motivational force behind the development of science at every level. In addition to the innovative qualities of war, there's a much broader social effect. In war, each side meditates on every element of an enemy's psychology fully immersing themselves in each other's cultural history. So much, in fact, that war has become the Little Red Schoolhouse of the Global Village. The best example of this being the way that Jihad has forced military commanders and the mass media to educate professionals and the general public about the ways of the Middle East and Islam. Governments are quite aware of the vast R&D activities that are accelerated to the war. But what never occurred to them is that the innovations resulting from this are precisely the ones that obliterate the identity image which is indispensable to peace and tranquility amongst nations. To summarize, wars accelerate our knowledge of each other and provide the crux of innovation. But while doing these things, cultural identity becomes lost, misplaced, or cross-bred. This loss provides the ground for further conflict. The society has to adjust to these disturbances, further wars ensue. War may be the self-perpetuating force of innovation, and innovation the self-perpetuating force of war. Innovation's endgame being self-annihilation. that electronic information systems are live environments in the full organic sense. They alter our feelings and sensibilities, especially when they are not attended to. Uh, hey man, what's up? I kind of wanted to talk to you about some ideas that I have. Oh cool, yeah. I want to show you what I was doing too. Check it out, it's our new logo. Huh. You don't like it? No, it's not that. I plan on doing a sticker campaign around the city, so it's gonna help us. Yeah, sure, whatever. What did you want to talk about, Charles? Alright, well just um, you know, you said you wanted to kind of give uh, more control over to the rest of the group. So I have an idea for the next flash mob. Oh great, let's hear it. Well actually I kinda of wanted to present it to the group, like you usually do. Um, and then we could all sort of discuss it. Well, why don't you tell me first? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd really just rather do it the way that we always do it. You know, it'll open up a dialogue within the group, and then, you know, if you don't like it, you can just veto it. It's all or nothing. You put the message out, gather everyone together, and tomorrow on the stage is yours. No, we don't even need to get other people involved. Just you, Sam, and Felicia would be good. That way, you know, if it's kind of a lame idea or whatever, I won't embarrass myself in front of a whole bunch of people. There's no doubt in my mind that what you have in store is going to be great. Awesome. By the way, I love the logo. 
It's kind of like Philip Morris meets Enron. Thanks for coming. I know that this is Jerome's meeting, but I wanted to take the opportunity to formally introduce Jerome. He believes he has some new ideas about the direction of our group. I, for one, believe in him, and I'm excited to hear about some new ideas. Let's give him our full attention. Without further ado, Jerome. <clears throat> uh, thanks, Anthony. Thanks, guys. I think when I'm done speaking, we're going to have a really exciting new direction for the group, so thanks for hearing me out. It has been said that the computer revolution is greater than that of the wheel in its capacity to reshape human outlook and organization. Whereas the wheel is an extension of the foot, the computer gives us a space where the hand of man has never set foot. But the metaphor of the wheel and the foot goes further than this, because it's more than just an extension. In fact, it comes something closer to an amputation. Every technological innovation is an amputation of our physical bodies and abilities in order that they may be amplified for social power and action. Naturally, such an amputation is associated with pain. If someone were to cut off your ear, for example, you would feel tremendous pain. Likewise, when these metaphorical amputations occur, psychological pain follows. These amputations so disturb our central nervous systems that we lash out in defense, and wars are a natural result. Political and social minorities are often the first to feel the effects of this disturbance in the most visceral ways. In our globally networked planet, this revolt has spilled over into the third world. We are beginning to see a social and political shift due to the exponential growth of technology. Today, two cultures exist side by side. One more advanced than any other in history, and one that maintains a way of living that is thousands of years old. This push-pull dynamic will be one in which the third world will find itself empowered by technologies available through the first, while simultaneously the first world will be grappling with its own violent history. The older foundations of society which the first world has come to feel are no longer necessary will reassert themselves as part of the bigger picture. This is something that we normally only witness in the rear view mirror, but one of the prime examples of this is the decline of religion in the first world and the third world's attempt to grapple with this through jihad. Now, if you were to place a frog in a pot of water at room temperature and slowly bring that to a boil, the frog would simply wait and die, boiling to death, never feeling the incremental change in temperature. Here in the first world, change has come at a slow boil, and although societal upheavals have occurred, they've been far less painful than the ones experienced in the third world. They are being asked to amputate all of their senses at once. They're being asked to navigate a world with a roadmap for which they have no legend. The major advances in civilization are processes that all but wreck the societies in which they occur. In a global village, these stakes spell extinction. This brings me to the idea for my next flash mob. As a collective, we have been most effective at building a network of like-minded individuals from around the country, 
but least effective at enacting social change locally. The time has come that we need to be more revolutionary in our thought process and more radical in our actions. Recently, I've been gathering like-minded people throughout our network, radicalizing the unconverted, and redirecting the message through our website. Tonight, I will send a single text message, and a sizable group of our people will descend on a wealthy block of Manhattan to destroy the waste. All gas-guzzling, atmosphere-polluting vehicles will be destroyed. All sweatshop-employing, luxury goods-producing boutique shops will be destroyed. All technology-producing stores of innovation will be destroyed. Anybody who gets in our way will be destroyed. The ways in which power is consolidated, wealth is concentrated into the hands of a tiny elite, education is treated as an annoyance, and the environment is taken for granted are unacceptable. And we intend to make it known that we will no longer stand passively in the face of these atrocities. This is going to be the first of many demonstrations in which we intend to demand a slowdown to the world's production and a reassessment of the way we choose to live. Now the time has come that we must adjust not invent. Society must stop moving technology forward, and we must innovate our confrontations with it. We have to find the environments in which it will be possible for us to live with our new inventions by destroying the environments with which we have become too comfortable. We intend to demonstrate the violence that is necessary for modern technology's birth, and the violence that follows that birth. We intend to bring the violence of evolution to a street corner near you. What do you mean you redirected our message on the website? Alicia works the website, and I check up on it like every day. There hasn't been a change in weeks. None of you have been viewing our actual website. That's a dummy site that I've set up for your computers to redirect to. Cool. What about the message boards? I maintain contact with our people constantly. Again, those are fakes. Those are accounts that I've set up to be maintained by people that I've approved to communicate with you. And how long has it been going on? For months. Well, I mean, we're not going to let you get away with it. What's the point of you telling us anyway? Because I wanted to present my point of view and give you the opportunity to come along. This is the inevitable direction for our group and after everything I've said, I can't understand why you don't see that. This is stupid. We are a peaceful organization. You're getting impatient about something that takes time. We don't have time. The world is outpacing us in every respect and this is going to happen whether you like it or not. Your fingerprints are all over. You as the established leader of this group and Felicia as the weapon. Anything that you say to the police, I can deny. And as far as anybody who's involved with this project is concerned, you're the organizers of this. Sam, you're not saying much. Tell him Tell this is a short side thing that was burning to us. Well, we've talked about a lot of these things. He and I, and I agree with him on a lot of the theory. It's just, I didn't know about any of this until you guys did just now. But, I'm sorry, I have to go with Jerome. He's right, he's been ineffective. I'm sick and tired of sitting around here and playing house. I'm tired of feeling like I'm in a media studies after school program. Are we not a political action group? Does the theory not add up? Do you just want to sit around in a university library writing papers forever? No, but I also don't want to go to prison forever. Then come along with us on this. Look, I've covered our digital tracks very well. Nobody has to find out about anything. If you want to participate, we want you to join in on this. But if you don't, then I'm going to have to ask you to step aside. And that's all that I ask. You have my word. You gotta go, Sam. What do you expect us to do? I expect you to sit here quietly for the night and watch history be written. Are we just going to sit here? We need to just call the cops. Jerome is just going to go destroy a bunch of property. I don't agree with his methods, but he's not going to hurt anyone. Hopefully we can just move on with our lives. And we'll still be letting a sociopath run around. Is this going to give any group like ours a bad name? I don't think it's going to get as much publicity as Jerome thinks. Look at the notice all of our other actions got us. Hopefully no one will show up. It'll just be a blip on the nightly news, you know? Like random vandalism. One of those people will get caught, and they will tell the police what happened. Jerome is a good hacker. Hopefully he covered his tracks. Hopefully we can move on together and fight the good fight. We're too important to give up over this. We're not doing anything after this.
Felicia, I'm just thinking of the greater good, you know, the big picture. Wait, come on. Hey, come on, Felicia. I never want to see your face again. I never want to see any of you again. Well, where are you going to go? Just don't call the cops. Damn it, I knew this would happen. Man, I told you wouldn't be able to get away with this. Oh, it's fucking Felicia. This is a disaster. Did the cops do this to you? It's just a little more chaotic than I anticipated. This is what I've been saying. Further out and faster. This mission, your involvement, and everything we built is awful, man. <sighs> over. Writing is in ten-foot letters all over that rock. We accomplished what we set out to do. This is just the beginning. Stop. Knock it off. Please. Stay. Be part of Willie. Everything we wanted will be accomplished, Anthony, but we are at war and we do not have what is necessary. An administrator in a bureaucratic world is a man who feels big by merging his non-entity into an abstraction. A real person in touch with real things inspires terror in this man. Your feelings are natural, but if you are serious about the cause, you can rest assured that what you wanted will be. You are a cog in the revolution, and you have served it well, but you have become obsolete. Now, you're a martyr. In the name of progress, our official culture is striving to force the new media to do the work of the old. Now we have to adjust, not to invent. We have to find the environments in which it will be possible to live with our new inventions. All social changes are the effect of new technologies on the order of our sensory lives. It is this shift in order, altering the images that we make of ourselves and of our world, that guarantees that every major technological innovation will so disturb our inner lives that wars necessarily result as misbegotten efforts to recover the old images and sensations.
to where you were? Yeah. A little further over? This is what we're gonna go with. We're gonna try to get right back here when we come back. I'm already starting to see the sky change. Yeah.